What's up guys, of course, welcome to Apple Wi-Fi Battle with your show, of course, that's Scavenger. And yeah, today we have a match against Star Dasher, of course, in a uh, OU match, actually. I can't believe we ever had one, and obviously OU is not my turf, and uh, it's gonna look like that throughout this match, to be honest. Uh, my team is super, super, super aggressive, I think only with one wall that be in the Rotom. And I think besides that, everything else hits hard. Um, <laughs> his team is, of course, quite similar. I guess there's not that much more variety, really, no you. He's bringing Heatran, Lupani, Raikou, uh, Ladias, I believe, uh, Asamariel, and Skarmory. Now, Skarmory is his go-to lead here. It's, there's no reason for him not to go with it. Consider that I have really no defogger. Altera could be one, but, you know, obviously that is not going to be the case. I myself using Heatran. Uh, Assault as Gengar, uh, Shesto Resto, um, Helios, I was gonna call him Rotom Wash, um, Life Orb Tornadoes, um, Megalteria, and actually Choice Scarf Adamant Digger Speed. Um, besides that, there's not, not, nothing really, really to it. I'm gonna expect him to leave with the Scar Marie and basically do damage. I This was my last game on my stream, and I really just wanted to. Uh, not fall. I really, really wanted to do something good with this and try my very best to do so. And Star is an extremely good player as always. So it, I was not asking for an easy task, and you guys will see just why. So, anyway, guys, enjoy. So, as expected, and like I said, he's gonna lead off with Skarmory. Now, I don't wanna go for a Lava Plume here in the beginning uh, for obvious reasons. Or, first of all, I really want to have my rocks up. And I think you felt that, and I'm obviously in the wrong here. The reason I don't want to go for Lava Plume straight on at it is basically because he has um, Heatron on his own, and I felt that that would have been a dangerous play to make. So Flash Cannon was the better choice, I thought, while well, he just keeps setting up. Uh, I'm definitely not, I'm not seeing him here, I obviously aren't. He's getting up all the hazards he need, and... Uh, I can't do anything about it. Now, I will eventually go for Lava Plume here because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that, you know, he, he's doing this, like, he's gonna win this and I'll, I'll look like a fool trying to, um, try to find some kind of footing. So, two Spike layers and Stealth Procs are here to stay, there is no way of denying that. Now, Hasumasu is gonna come in and I knew I could outspeed it and, uh, I've learned one thing from Esmeralds and that is never switch out on them. They can belly drum. Uh, have to avoid that situation and uh, this thing pretty much clean this heat run off so I was like oh no <laughs> the defensive estimate yeah sure but yeah that, that, that was pretty bad uh, so anyway I'm gonna bring Helios because I can deal with him really well here and I decided to go for Thunder Wave and there was no risk for him going for Raikou uh, which also means that uh, there was a bad play of me of not <laughs> actually seeing that happening um, because I will go for a T-Wave and of course the beam that is, he is an electric type he will be completely mute to that and I'm basically in a bad situation now the only switch I have and that's been a blunt about it is Gengar because I, when I see a shiny Raikou I know Aura Sphere is a thing and also Hidden Power Ice could be ha happen here so Gengar was my best bet like I said he's Assault Fisted he's my special defensive wall and I say that by ish it's not really uh, it's not really doing anything here, obviously, but we will exchange Shadow Balls and I'll actually be able here to score not only a crit, but a special defense drop. And that's a big deal because that won't matter at all. And uh, <laughs> the thing is here, due to that special defense drop, I decided here that I'm gonna go for Tornadoes because I would speed. I don't need to go for U-Turn uh, because I'm not sure to kill him. Heat Wave is a superior choice. And... Um, this is where things get bad. I missed the heat wave. And that tornado's gone. I was simply like, oh, are you kidding me? I threw like my headset away. I like, fuck it. Fuck this game. Fuck everything. This is so unfair. I hate this game so much. And Sauna is gonna come in, which is his heat run. And I'm gonna go for Digger Speed because I'm scarfed. I felt really good about this. I really did. So I was thinking, yeah, just go for Niku, finish that off. There's no risk for me of doing so. And uh, yeah, that was my game idea. So uh, fuck you, Star Dasher for this. Fuck you so much. This is so, so bad. Of course, he scarfed himself. Oh my god, my digger speed just boom, gone. 
Now I know at least that he's scarfed, uh, which is of course important. And now, now the wind of change is coming because I have an honest chance to go for Dragon Dance. I actually decided to not make a vault first turn because I did fear that in worst case scenarios that I could just be wrong, had a wrong item or anything like that. So I decided that I could actually be better off not make a vault big and take a potential flash cannon to the base. Now, of course, it was scarfed and uh, I was basically, there was a gut feel I had there. Uh, just in case of really and um, I'm gonna make a whole second turn here because he's gonna make all itself come for fake out and the thing is here with my mega evolution off I have more defenses uh, I'm not getting that much more chunkier but you know the fake out will still do damage so I have to resist that in any way possible uh, and with that damage kind of looks like that return will kill me so I have to go for double edge taking the loop honey out of here and uh, this is where Stardash should make a very, very, very risky play. Uh, he was expecting me to be adamant and not Jolly. And I, of course, knew that he was scarred by now and knew that after one Dragon Dance, I will have speed. And that's a dead Heatron. That's a pretty dead Heatron. And yeah, <laughs> that was great. Uh, I really needed to do something like that. I really, really did. Uh, now, he will bring the Asimov Healer. And the thing is, I knew I could take an Aqua Jet. Uh, but um, player off of course will kill me so there is no need for me going for roost it will actually be quite risky for me doing so and uh, I had to go for an earthquake I really really did like I said had I gone for roost here I would have been in a position where player off would have killed me so it would have been a high risk of doing so so there's only two Pokemon left it's Sirilatias and uh, or Latios and uh, Raikou now uh, I am forced here to sack Malteria, and but what a job it did! Four Pokémon cleaned, done! There's a reason Altaria has been offered a Banhammer! That double edge, BOOM! Scown! <laughs> and of course I didn't expect Altaria to put in so much work this match, I had no idea. But it all comes down to, can I take a Thunderbolt from the Raikou, and can I land a Hydro Pump on it? And of course, luckily, we are going to be able to actually survive the um, onslaught that is the Thunderbolt from the Raikou. But like I said, the worst case scenario is not the right Thunderbolt, that is, can we land the Hydro Pump? And yes, Rotom coming through, killing the Raikou. This is a very, very, very strange win, to be honest. So yeah, like I said, this was a very strange battle for me. And like I said, 17 turns. That's not a whole lot, but then again, it's obvious what really ha did happen. Uh, Starge had a major momentum at the beginning. Um, me he missing the heat wave was it was not important, but it forced me to uh, play really, really risky, and it worked to my favor this time. And um, of course, Altaria be in all kinds of threads here. Um, I think Starge had a really rough time there when uh, he sacked the Heatran. I think Heatran was super important for him. Um, and of course it was so sure it would outspeed since it was Timid Scarf and obviously that didn't happen Then I have a complete edge over that because I was Yala like I said there and besides that um, yeah I mean had he sacked um, Lodios instead of Asimaril things might have not turned this great to be honest because I think th or the double edge would have killed me basically the residual damage I would have been forced to do in would have killed me and I think he didn't do those plays because he was hoping that an Aqua Jet will be enough. And obviously I knew I could take some kind of that. I, I knew that the max damage roll on that was 37, something around there at level 50. So I've been forced to those situations before. <laughs> so that's why I stayed in and went for EQ. Like I said, I couldn't risk it either. Had it gone for our play rough, it would have been over if I went for Rooster. But when Starship was an incredible fun game, I liked these fast games that we do. It's always the same, the same thing. Everything falls apart really bad against us, so it was a real pleasure, man. Um, and for everybody else, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. So, yeah, remember, the sky's limit, and I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.